and welcome to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23 where as you can see right from the start here I'm just starting career mode and we have certain mods and I'll let you see me untick allow respawn on TAC life support otherwise keep everything else the same and load up the realistic progression light tech tree and what Realism Overhaul is, is a collection of mods, okay, and let me go to the tracking station to show you what it looks like. Unlike normal Kerbal Space Program, Realism Overhaul is a collection of mods that turns our, uh, the Kerbal system into our regular solar system to the best possible approximation that is possible in KSP. So, if you're looking for the normal KSP experience and trying to get some ideas about what to do in KSP, this is probably not the thing for you. Uh, this is going to be more of an advanced thing. First of all, you'll notice our moon is now in an inclined orbit, and that's because, of course, relative to the Earth's equator, because of the Earth's axial tilt, the moon is inclined. It's not inclined with respect to the ecliptic, but there's no way to model axial tilt in Kerbal Space Program any other way. The planets are mostly all good up to Jupiter, then things start getting a little bit wonky, but otherwise Moho is Mercury, Eve is Ven uh, Venus, Kerbin is Earth of course, Duna is Mars and it does have two moons around it, and Jewel is Jupiter with the four Galilean moons. So so all that is pretty pretty good. Other than Real Solar System, which is the mod that sets it to this, we also have other mods to create a more realistic experience. For instance, Ferb Aerospace adjusts the aerodynamics. Deadly Reentry means that reentry heat is a thing and we can get destroyed by it. Tac Life Support, which you saw me deal with in the beginning of the episode, is the, uh, creates the requirement that Kerbals need food, water, and oxygen. Remote tech means that our satellites, our unmanned probes have to maintain contact somehow, and that's this red dot you see here, that's the command center. And so we have to have a satellite constellation in order to maintain contact with unmanned missions. Real fuels means that you can't just transfer fuels into any tank you want because different tanks will have different fuels and different engines need different fuels. And those will be realistic fuels. And of course, if you're going to have real fuels, you're going to have real engines. So all the engine stats have been changed to match stats of real world engines. Engine igniter means that you can't just uh, ignite the engines however you like. Some of them only have one ignition. Uh, I did make a modification to that in that some of the engines have been only ignitable externally through the launch clamps. And I've changed that so that those engines now have one ignition. And that's uh, for my own convenience, honestly. Uh, the launch clamps didn't really attach on to some of the engines properly. And so I needed to give them one ignition for the Saturn V uh, mission. And that's that's the inspiration for all this. The reason I'm doing Realism Overhaul, a Realism Overhaul series, is because the Saturn V mission to the moon uh, turned out to be uh, quite popular, so I decided I would try this. I, your likes do matter to me, and so I saw that that got quite a lot of likes and a lot of attention, so I will, uh, I will do this. Now, let's go to the tech tree to talk about the premise behind all of this. Now, I'm not going to try and do everything realistically. I've got the Saturn V, but I'm not going to try and recreate all the rockets in history or anything like that. I think some commenter said that he would try to do that, and I'm going to leave that up to him. I'm not going to try and be historical about this. Rather, I'm going to imagine a nation today that is trying to, uh, trying to get into space, but uh, can, has the funds, like it's a really rich, small nation on the coast of Africa, let's say, for some reason, because the continent on Kerbin happens to be shaped like Africa. But anyway, a small little nation with little green men that has access to all the technology that uh, we have today. 
uh, Soviet rockets, uh, American rockets, and well, I say access to, I mean eventually after they unlock technologies, and eventually wants to build the Saturn V. Uh, so I've actually copied the Saturn V craft file into this save, and our goal, our first goal is going to be to finally unlock all the technologies that would be required to build the Saturn V. Once we've got that, I'm going to see what the Saturn V could have done if uh, they had continued funding the program. Could it have brought it to Mars? Brought us to Mars? Could it have brought a rover to one of the Galilean moons? So we're going to try that out. Alright, but first we need to uh, get some more technology. This is the realistic progression tech tree which is very 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 different from the normal tech tree and I have not played with it much. I do know one thing about it and that's that we get this starting technologies thing for Zero Science so I'm gonna get that. I should mention that I have dumped all the fairings from the additional part mods. I've got a lot of part mods and there'll be a list of the mods I'm using in the description of the video but I've dumped the fairings on most of the part mods because I'm using uh, procedural fairings and I've also dumped the fuel tanks because I'm using stretchy tanks. And all of this is to save with RAM because there is a RAM limit to Kerbal Space Program. And allow me to run Universe Replacer and Visual Enhancement without the texture compression. Okay, so we're not running texture compression. I am using the reduced texture packs for the squad textures and for the KW textures. But otherwise, no texture compression and we're running Universe Replacer and Visual Enhancement. Okay, so that's the situation. And if you're new to KSP, this might all seem like gibberish to you, so uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I am cognizant of that. And uh, hopefully I'll try and smooth things out, but this is all discussion about mods, basically, to the program. All right, so we've got this starting technology, and otherwise we need to accumulate some science in order to in order to unlock more technologies and other necessities right now we're going to be starting with probe parts and unmanned missions which is an interesting thing with remote tech so let's go to the VAB and see what kind of mission we can put together so you see we don't start out with anything manned and uh, let me also show you there's the Saturn V block K waiting for us okay so we've got these two probes and I'm gonna pick the one with more max temperature I <laughs> and it also happens to be smaller so there you go I'm not too sure why I have two of these there's a mark one and a mark two I'm sure there's a reason okay so the logical thing to do would be to put a stretchy tank at the bottom I think that's fair and what could possibly get us up a good distance not these little guys not not yet um, this probe is a little bit bulbous I don't think anybody actually made a rocket like this maybe Goddard might have but usually we'll be putting stuff in fairings and that'll be one of the first things I unlock um, I'm going to put Kerbal Flight Engineer uh, oh, I only need one I wanted to click that okay and then besides that we also need some way to communicate with it and we absolutely need one need one of these okay I'm gonna put that up there oh yeah there's a problem with using Kerbal Engineer actually let me show that to you so I'm going to put Kerbal Engineer but I'm also gonna put MechJib and I'll show you what the problem is okay but uh, let's slap on some rockets first and we need more space so I can the stretchy tanks is wonderful you just push R and you make more of a tank for yourself Okay, something about that size will do. More like uh, this is going to be a sounding rocket. A sounding rocket is a rocket to well sound things out a bit. And I like that texture. And I'm going to put four of these on. These are not very good rockets, but but uh, these are too small, and the rest are way too huge. Uh, for instance, voila. And yeah, and oh my god. Okay, so so we need something reasonably sized, and this is really all we've got. 
Why is it bad? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, the ISP is 84 at the sea level. In vacuum, it's 280, but we're, we are not going into vacuum. So ISP is horrible. Thrust is not throttleable. Okay, it's basically a solid rocket style. There's no throttle. It starts at 13 and ends at 13. Any amount of throttling I do is going to be completely useless. The good thing, vectoring is 5 degrees, and we'll need that because we don't have any reaction wheels. Okay, so all of that taken into consideration. Oops, sorry, pick that up. Okay, so let's see. Mechjeb. So I'll explain why it's no good to use uh, Kerbal Engineer in this case. Kerbal Engineer makes an assumption about the thrust of the rockets. It um, And let me uh, add some fuel. So in order to add fuel to the stretchy tanks with real fuels, you go into action groups, click on the tank, and add UDMH and N204 in this case, which is what this type of rocket needs. Okay, and we see a delta V of 1500, which is fine. Uh, ISP is horrible. And if we take off atmospheric stats, it's like more like 5000, but we're not going to get to the atmosphere, uh, get out of the atmosphere. Now you'll see a thrust to weight ratio of 4.28 here, and even while I have atmospheric stats, it has 4.28. However, it's that's because it's not taking into account the fact that real engines adjust the engines so that they have a different thrust in the atmosphere. So you can see from Mechjeb, Mechjeb says the thrust to weight ratio is 4.26, however, it has a sea level thrust of 1.28. Which means that if I stretch this tank out, let's say even up to, even now, Kerbal Engineer would have me think that I could get off the ground, but in fact I can't. I wouldn't be able to get off the ground, this would flop and be useless. So, no luck there. Let's keep this at 1.1. And in fact, uh, Kerbal Engineer is going to be now obsolete, so. We're going to have to rely on Mechjeb for this because otherwise we're not going to get proper stats. So I'm going to move Mechjeb here and move Kerbal Engineer off. Okay, no avoiding that. Now we have this communication. We need parachutes. We need to be able to recover this. We have these little guys. These are the only ones that actually work at this point. With this particular probe part, these little ones don't attach to it. Can't do it. And let's make them symmetrical. Fix staging. So there we have it, a first sounding rocket. We can have our launch stability enhancement. Like that. Yeah, this should be fine. You'll see the empty mass is 0.2 tons, which is more uh, very easy for the parachutes to deal with. Yeah, that looks like a perfectly good sounding rocket. Very, very Goddard. Okay, um, what would be a good sounding rocket name? I don't know if it's been used before, but I guess Skylark would be good. I think it was a rocket name, but I don't remember. I'm not trying to copy it, though. Alright, well without further ado, let's uh, try to get some science out of this so we can unlock further technologies. Uh, it had to be at night. Well, it's, it's, uh, we've got a little bit of a glow, but uh, it's not going to last. Um, time warp is not going to work. I think it's the um, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement that uh, prevents me from time warping while on the launch pad. So, no relief for that. I'm not going to use the launch control, which is another mod that's attached to the launch clamps. Uh, that would only really be appropriate for manned missions. You can see my custom info window, which is part of MechJeb. And uh, one of the few really wonderful things about MechJeb is you can create your own little info window there. Um, and we're not using a MechJeb that allows us to control anything, as you can see. Though. That would be realistic anyway to have that. But uh, throttle is up, SAS is on, and I think we're go for launch. So up we go.
So it's gonna get a little bit dark because it is night and I can't do too much about that. I can try and lighten things up in post-processing, but only to a certain degree, otherwise the colors get washed down. We're going straight up and straight down, because there's no way this can get into orbit. We can't throttle it though, so I think I should put a lean into it just to make sure it doesn't uh, gain too much velocity and start stressing itself out. As you can see, we're already getting mock effects, and this is quite a, quite a low altitude for such things. I might have to shut the rockets down prematurely before the, uh, otherwise the parachutes might get overheated. Yeah, I'm not gonna risk overheating the parachutes. So, uh, well, we'll get up a decent height. And let's see if we can activate the data recorder. So this is one way you can get science, is using the data recorder on the Stay Putniks in, uh, under Realism Overhaul. I don't know if this works in, uh, in regular KSP. I've, I've never tried. But it's absolutely necessary under Realism Overhaul. And we're going to take... Um, atmospheric readings from Kerman's atmosphere and that's thanks to this data recorder. It it costs this data in order to do this particular experiment. Okay, so uh, atmospheric analysis shows increased levels of radiations of radiations as the atmosphere becomes thinner. Uh, physical sample will be brought back in order to make further readings. Okay, and uh, let's get that sample. Radiation samples retrieved, they need to be safely landed back on Kerbin in order to be analyzed. So altogether, that's 50 signs for this and 25 for the other one. And that's 75, and it sounds like a lot for a first mission. Uh, but uh, that's due mainly to the way that the tech tree is configured. It's very different. Alright, I think we're going to be starting to go down soon. Yep. All right, so uh, once we get to a decent altitude, I will I will engage the parachutes. And then hopefully we will get all the science back and we'll be able to unlock uh, more productive technologies. And especially I want to unlock technologies that don't require me to put a bulbous thing at the top here. Actually, Skylark was probably a bad name for this. I should have come up with a better name that that highlighted the fact that it had a horrible round sphere at the front. Though it's not the most aerodynamically inefficient shape in the planet. Um, still, you want your cone shape. Alright. And... Going down... Guess we can time warp a bit. You can see that uh, another consideration is electric charge. Okay, I think we can uh, start contemplating the shoots here. Yep, okay. SAS off. Now, uh, I'm wondering where, which side of the planet we're on. Oh, we're just entering dark. That's gonna be annoying. We need to do a mission that takes a long time. Uh, see, the problem is I don't have any way of time warping. Uh, as long as, if I can't time warp on the pad, I don't... Oh, wait. Hmm. Maybe I can just... I don't know. I'll have to try something. But there's no way for me to time warp unless I figure out something. Alright. And when I say time warp, I mean more than physical time warp, more than 4x, in order to get us back into daylight. Oh, uh, real shoots is, of course, installed. I mean. 
Um, like I said, I'll, I'll get a full list and uh, well, I'll just uh, post the list to the uh, post a link to the realism overhaul list so that I don't have to flood my video description with all of it. There is a lot of mods involved. And I've selectively deleted parts in order to make sure that it all fits together. So uh, you can say it is a highly customized install. None of the parts that are in the future, for instance, um, KSP Interstellar I didn't install, uh, and so none of that sort of thing. Only, only rockets that we could build today. Okay, there we are. It's a little bit glitchy because of the real solar system resizing Kerbin to Earth. And, yep, let's recover vessel. Okay, there we are. We, we got 80 science. So why do we have 79? How did we start out with negative science? I object. <laughs> That's not right. That's not fair. Uh-huh. Okay, hopefully when we buy technologies, it'll uh, round off in the correct direction for us. Let's go to the tech tree. Okay, so priority... Well, okay, uh, there is basic rocketry. That's that's sort of important. Um, but I think priority has to be given to early probes, yeah? Because we'll probably need the solar panels and communication stuff. And uh, I'm especially pining for this particular nose cone. I, I mean, it's not a nose cone, it's actually a probe part. And it looks a little bit more like you would want a probe part to look like. So let's research that. And I also wanted fairings. So uh, that's 10 science. It looks like we're rounding badly though. So I better grab uh, basic rocketry while I can. Yeah. For some reason it's giving me one less point than I would have liked. That's not fair. Uh, I would have liked these parachutes. And decouplers. Uh, okay. Um, nope. It won't let me. Even though I should have that extra point. Alright, let's go to VAB and see what we can do with this. So, uh, instead of the Skylark, we can construct a new one based on the new probe part. This little fellow. Much more efficient, uh, especially in terms of aerodynamics, which are realistic now. Um, Mass-wise, it's actually greater in mass, but that is not the only consideration. I uh, that even the 0.5 uh, meter tanks are too wide, so we're gonna need one of these stretchable ones to tape uh, to uh, smooth things out. Yeah. And I don't think we need the full uh, 0.625. I think we can go down to 0.5. Okay, and shrink it so that the lines are smooth. Alright, now 0.5 tanks. Excellent, and I'll uh, I'll change the check tech to the texture to, well which texture was it? There's actually a few. I guess, no that's, that's the one with the stripes. I guess that's the closest. All right. Now we have these rockets. Oh, that's bigger, is it? Okay, maybe we'll go with the 0 0.625 then. So 0 0.625 tank, and we'll increase the size to match. Okay. Now this looks more like a sounding rocket, so we'll attach this at the bottom. And the benefit of this is, unlike these, this throttles, first of all, very important, and its sea level ISP is much better. The downside is its vectoring range isn't uh, quite as good. It's also heavier, obviously. Though probably not heavier than four of the others.
Okay. Now, I want to fill these tanks with whatever this can take. Oh, it takes the fuel and oxidizer. That's quaint. And Mechjeb, tell me how much we've got here. Okay, well, uh, we've still got quite a lot of thrust. Uh, and again, because this seems to be an unmodified rocket, I've accidentally pushed T for texture instead of R for sizing. Um, means it's more stockish. Which, which isn't a problem. This might be too big for it to uh, to handle. Uh, the gimbling, I mean, because it needs to be able to maintain control. Well, anyway, uh, radial mount parachutes, obviously. Uh, we won't put that at the top there. We'll put them here. And let's see what its empty mass is. Uh, no, not that one. This one. 0.5? I think these parachutes should be able to handle 0.5. And we need to be able to control it. I think we're going to try and get this into space. Now this doesn't have the data recording thing, so we're not going to be able to do that. Our goal is to get this into, the spa into space and back. We don't have any other science experiments here. We'll need to unlock some sort of science experiment in order to uh, do anything spectacular, I think. I don't know. Because I, I really haven't done this before, I'm just trying my best here. Um, Alright, so we have that sort of control. Getting into space and back is tricky business though, it needs to be able to slow down properly on the way down. Staging would have helped, but uh, do we have decouplers? Only huge decouplers. I don't know why we suddenly got huge decouplers instead of anything particularly useful to us right now. Oh well. Well, I guess we can uh, push it to the limit of the... 1.3 is good. Alright, I think that's a good looking sounding rocket. I don't know if it'll work though. Let's see. Uh, I mean, we're, when I say work, I mean whether we can get into space and back safely is basically the goal here. So, I guess we'll call all our sounding rockets Skylark. Let's just go with that. Skylark 2. And let's uh, take it out to the launch pad and see how it works. Alright, so here we are. SAS on, throttle is up, and we're in the dark, unfortunately. Oh, sorry folks, but uh, until I get a way to time warp, I have no choice. So let's, let's launch and see how it does. Now, we can't really go horizontally too much because otherwise we'll lose connection and if we try and uh, add more dishes it adds more weight. So, not the best idea. And of course, not only does it add more weight, but then you also have to add batteries and electric charge. All very complicated things. Okay, we'll cut the rocket here, and we'll just coast to Apoapsis, and then on the way back down we'll have to burn a bit to slow ourselves down. The key is making sure uh, SAS maintains our attitude, otherwise this is going to be 
especially as we pass apoapsis, that curve as it uh, starts to descend can bring the nose down. Technically, this end should be heavier, so hopefully it would go down first, but uh, the aerodynamics might push the nose down still. So yeah, we are over highly modified Kerbin. You can see the glimmer of uh, of daylight on the side that we are not rotating towards. <laughs> I think is yeah yeah. Strange. I I don't know. I'm, I think I'm disoriented for some reason. Okay, okay, hold on. Uh, come on. SAS, do not allow this to flip, please. It's not like SAS has any power over it, actually. Without the um, rocket running, it doesn't have the gimbling. And this has scant uh, reaction control. Actually, it has built in. Ah, it has a built in antenna. Not too much of a range, though. Okay, here we go. Back down again. Well, I guess if we finally get something in orbit, we can finally time warp so that I don't have to do everything in the dark. Okay, well, let's do some braking here. I mean, it's important to slow down not only for re-entry heat, but also for the G-forces. Because uh, coming straight down, the, the G-forces actually would be enough to rip this vehicle apart. Just the fact that the atmosphere is slowing you down so quickly. Now, I wonder how many relights I have on this thing. I didn't really check, did I? Ah, uh, this one doesn't have it configured. That's weird. I should fix that, actually. I, The only mod that I've actually messed with is Engine Igniter, and so I could probably add the... Uh, conditions for this particular rocket. I need to dump the fuel anyway because I don't want the parachutes trying to handle more mass than they need to. So better to just run the rocket. Hmm. Well, at this point uh, there's not much I can do with the rocket. I guess it'll have to be alright. Okay, parachutes engaged. We have been slowed to 7.4 meters per second. Boy, do the parachutes look small with relation to this rocket. Uh, yeah, probably the limit of those parachutes. I don't think I want to put any more than this. Okay, so we can time warp to the surface. We lost the little uh, engine, but we can recover the rest of the vessel. Okay, eight precious science. All right, let's go to the tech tree and see what we can do with that. So here's the conundrum. I have no idea how to do science. Um, I mean, because uh, we haven't really gotten si goo containers or anything like that. Uh, I'm trying to find the goo containers because we only have 10 science now. How am I going to do science? I don't know. Maybe I, I wonder if it is possible to repeat those atmospheric things. 
maybe. I guess it would have to be, because I'm not seeing... Oh, wait, there's a... Gravial... Ooh. But that's 50 science. That's not fair. Good parachutes. What the heck? Is that... What? I... I'm not gonna I'll speculate what that's all about. Why do I have a cripple there? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I do not know what these things are. That might be a mod that I've deleted some parts for and not other parts or something weird. So these were useless things that don't work. So I'm gonna assume that they really don't work. Um. Just really going through this, trying to see where the science parts might be. Looks like the gravioli is the only thing. Surprising to get that quickly. Ooh. Landing struts and everything. Lights! <laughs> well, that's a hundred science. We're not getting that anytime soon. Oh, wow. Really want these. 50 signs. Can't get them. So the best thing to do is probably to uh, to get some decouplers, right? That's the most important thing. So I'm gonna get this one. And this also has parachutes, so that's good. Alright. And apparently after we get the 0.5 and 0.625 meter ones, we can get the 1 meter ones next. So it's sort of like that. Alright, so but our next goal should be to open up these science instruments. So let's go back to the VAB and see how we can manage to grab ourselves at least 43 science.